Hi everyone, today I'm going to make my favorite Italian bread, ciabatta bread. I'm going to make two loaves of ciabatta. The ingredients I have today is I've got 250 grams of strong white bread flour. I've got about 200 ml of tap water. It's neither very hot nor very cold, just room temperature water. I've got 20 ml of olive oil. I've got 7 grams of instant yeast and seven grams of low sodium salt. You can just use normal salt. If you don't have low sodium salt, I've got some fine semolina for dusting. If you don't have semolina, it doesn't have to worry about anything. And um, just use normal strong white flour for dusting. I've got a plastic container here, which is about two liter container, which I have already lined with olive oil. It's, I've taken a rectangular container because I'm making two bread rolls because it's easy to cut in half a rectangular into two if you're making four rolls and if you're going to double the recipe then take a square container because it's easy to cut a square into four um, as compared to a rectangle into four so in the flour i'm going to put my yeast on one side and the salt on the other side Now, instead of kneading it by hand, I'm going to knead it in the electric mixer. The reason is because it's a very soggy dough and a bit messy to knead by hand. So you can use your hand if you need to, and it's absolutely fine if you don't have an electric mixer. Give it about 10 minutes of kneading. I'm going to use the electric mixer for about 10 minutes. So because it's very noisy, I'm going to cut the sound off when I'm uh, using the electric mixer. So I'm going to put the olive oil in it. Sorry about that. All the olive oil goes in there. I'm just going to start with half the amount of water I got. And I can add as I go along, depending on the consistency of the mixture. In the end, I want the mixture to be nice, smooth and silky. It will be a bit soggy to start, but don't worry about it too much. It will be fine in the end. So I'm going to run the mixer for about 10 minutes. I'm going to run it for a couple of minutes uh, on a low speed, then for the next seven, eight minutes on a high or medium speed. So the mixture mixes in nicely. So this dough be kneading for exactly 11 minutes. You can see it's a bit sticky. That's why I don't knead it by hand. And that's why I use the electric mixer and I use the dough hook for the mixing. So about 11 minutes I've used it for. Now I'm going to put this into the container which I had lined with olive oil. Just going to spread it a little bit so it spreads evenly. It will fill up the container. You'll see in a minute. So I'm going to leave this covered for two hours for it to rise and in two hours time I'm hoping it would rise by about two to three times what it is at the moment. So you can see what it is at the moment and um, so not much there at all and uh, hopefully it will rise to fill the container uh, evenly. Uh, I have not used the whole water as you can see I still got about uh, about 70 ml of water in there so I have used uh, not much water amount of water you use uh, for kneading depends on the amount of gluten obviously as you have in your bread flour I got a good bread flour this time around so the gluten is about I think 13 percent in this flour if you have less gluten in the flour then you will probably require a bit more water but it doesn't make much difference at all give this time because this is what brings the flavor to your bread the uh, longer you leave it the better the flavor will be so don't be in a rush to take it out in an hour hour and a half if you are rushing to go somewhere so i will see you back in a couple of hours so i've covered the dough up with a cloth and leave it there for two hours it's just a tea towel that i've covered it up with and i shall see you very soon
Welcome back. On this part, we I've been proving this dough for just over two hours. So you can see it is uh, quite well risen, very, very soft though. So be gentle handling it. I got a worktop covered with semolina and some uh, strong white flour. If you don't have semolina, just use flour. I got a pot here with some semolina and flour in it. Just going to sprinkle a little bit on top so it doesn't get stuck. I have to gently take this out onto the worktop and going to divide this into two. So I'm going to cut it longitudinally with a sharp knife, which I have here. And then I'm going to transfer the two doughs onto my baking tray, which is covered with non-stick baking paper. And I'm going to leave this um, on the tray in a plastic bag for about half an hour. And in that time, I'm going to heat up my oven it's a fan oven, it's in centigrade, so 200 degrees centigrade on a fan oven. If it's a non-fan oven you're using, then uh, use uh, 220 degrees centigrade. If you're using a Fahrenheit oven, then 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you have a gas oven, then gas mark seven. So there we are. I have put the dough onto the work surface. I've cut it into two and I've shaped it into roughly uh, shape of a, a baguette or a ciabatta and I'm going to leave it in a plastic bag for about 25 minutes to half an hour while my oven is heating there we go. and uh, we'll cook it for 25 minutes to half an hour I look for the color of the dough which is very important golden brown color nice and tap it to make sure it sounds hollow. So I've taken my dough out of the plastic bag. The two rolls look okay. Just going to shape it a little bit more. So it looks a bit tidy once it's baked. Uh, my oven been heating up to 200 degrees centigrade fan oven. It's all preheated. Going to just sprinkle some more semolina on it. More semolina on both. Spread it. Gives a nice texture. If you don't have semolina, just put some flour. That should be fine. Just going to put this into the oven for 25 minutes. So in the oven, 25 minutes, so it is 3 o'clock exactly, so 3.25, I'll have a look what it looks like. I'm looking for a nice golden brown color and a tapping should be quite hollow. So here we are, after 25 minutes, we got two loaves of bread, it's been cooling down, the color is nice, feels nice and hollow. And this is the second one. Again, color is nice and feels nice and hollow. So let's put these on the side. I have cut a little piece off. You can see how airy it is on the inside. And that is what I love about ciabatta. It's the texture of it is absolutely gorgeous. And let's taste it. I've got a little bit of olive oil in there. And, uh, and I've got a bit of chili oil. It's absolutely gorgeous. And later on for dinner, we'll have it with olive oil and balsamic vinegar and a bit of chili oil and also a bit of tomato salsa. And if you have any basil in the garden, then we put some basil in the tomato salsa as well. I hope to see you soon next time. Thank you for watching.